After getting promoted and being an alternate captain once again on another fleet hockey championship team, I was nominated for the Destroyer Navigator Officer course. The DNO course had the reputation as the hardest in the Navy, and it required that any candidate have the recommendation of the commanding officer. Even at that, the failure rate was typically one-third of the class. So clearly, I was the golden boy, and my ego was flying high. It was all about to come crashing down. While my ego may have been happy and well-fueled, I was not. Over the years, I had become increasingly disillusioned with the Navy. Like most of the military, we were really badly under-resourced and very badly overcommitted. Trying to keep an aging destroyer in good fighting trim on the punishing North Atlantic was stretching all of us to the breaking point. It seemed like it took everything we had just to keep from falling further behind and that didn't sit very well with my core value of excellence. And everywhere I looked, I saw signs of stress, strain, and fatigue on the faces of my shipmates. By the time I got to the DNO course, I was physically exhausted, mentally burnt out, and emotionally disillusioned. But I had wanted to become a navigator almost from the first time I had put to sea and got a sense of what it was all about. So I still really wanted to learn this magical skill. And I hoped that the course would give me that lift that I really needed. But instead, I found more frustration, more disillusionment. And the DNO course is not the place you want to be having that struggle, I can tell you. The course was three months long and intense. Even on the classroom phase, our instructors told us their intention for us was to go home every day with our heads spinning, to work until bedtime, get up the next day, and do it all again. And that was the easy part. At sea, we were put under constant physical and mental stress, sometimes having to work through the night to get our passages prepared. Then we would navigate through complex and dangerous waters under constant scrutiny that could result in our failure from the course at any moment. And of course, with the knowledge of what that might mean for our careers. <laughs> the pressure was immense and I felt myself beginning to sink. I could feel my performance spiraling downward, increasingly downward and with it my confidence and with that my spirits, until one night I found myself on the bridge of a minesweeper trying to execute a night passage, and I told myself I was done. It wasn't a particularly difficult passage, but the conditions were pretty miserable. It was late winter on the west coast, it was cold, it was dark, it was raining, and the bridge was exposed to the elements. I could hardly see a thing, so I had to switch to radar to navigate. But the bridge radar was old and wasn't functioning very well, and I, I found it almost impossible to see anything on the tiny screen as I tried to identify my landmarks and the course I needed to be on. At that moment, I realized the only course I truly knew I was on was the course to failure, and my ego began to panic. You're supposed to be good at this. And you're going to fail. We're going to be humiliated when everybody finds out what a fraud you are. Say goodbye to any dreams you may have had for your career. And then it looked for the easy way out. The way that would get rid of the discomfort, maintain the image it had created of me as a winner, and place the blame somewhere else. This course is bullshit. You and everybody else said so even before the sea phase. And the Navy's bullshit too. You knew that long ago and you've been thinking about getting out ever since. So why put yourself through this misery? Quit the course, quit the Navy, do it now. Go below, write your letter, resign your commission, and you can finally get some sleep. Think how good that would feel. It's hard for me tonight to adequately share with you 
just how low and miserable I was feeling at that moment. I was absolutely exhausted. My head felt like a bowl of soup. My body felt like bags of wet cement. And the only energy I seemed to have was this dull, fiery fear in my gut. It was gripping my chest and just seeping into my very bones. My ego was collapsing. But my core values, it turns out, were not. And at that moment, they stepped forward. I heard something inside me say, no, this is not how you're going to end things. You are going to follow through on the commitment you made, and you're going to finish this course, pass or fail. You can worry about your career when you get back in the fleet. Right now, you have a passage to complete. You could nail a passage like this when you were a green naval cadet. And it's the same you, only more experienced. So roll your sleeves up and get on with it. And at that moment, I had crystal clarity about the fresh start I needed to make. I wiped the radar clean. I set it up afresh as best I could, took a deep breath, straightened up, and dove back into the course. Now, I'd like to say that at that moment, the stirring music started and the Canadian flag rippled in the breeze. And I went on to become, you know, to obtain the greatest score that was ever seen on the DNO course. But in truth, it was just a hard-fought journeyman effort. I finished in the middle of the class. But considering that one-third of our class never realized their dream of becoming a navigating officer, and I can still see the terrible look of crushed look on their faces when they told us the fate, I felt humbly satisfied with the result. Being a navigator turned out to be everything I hoped it would be. My confidence returned and even some of my passion. And I proved proficient enough at it that I was invited to become the first navigator of HMCS Halifax, which was the first of the new Canadian patrol frigates and the first new ship, in fact, that had been commissioned into the Canadian Navy in nearly 20 years. It was a tremendous honor. My ego would have loved it, but I declined. During my tour of duty as a navigator, I followed up on the commitment I made that night in the DNO course, and I thought really hard about what I valued and what kind of future I wanted. I realized that the systemic problems that had so frustrated and disillusioned me had not gone anywhere, and that I likely could not show up as the best version of myself that I really wanted to if I stayed. It was time for a new beginning. So I resigned my commission, and I enrolled as a graduate student at the University of Edinburgh, which proved to be one of the happiest periods of my life, and which even these many years later deeply enriches my life almost on a daily basis. So, was it the best new beginning I could have made? I don't think I can really answer that. There were so many possible paths I could have chosen, and who's to know how any of them might have worked out. My friend and classmate from the Naval Officer Training Course, Mark Norman, went on to become Vice Admiral and second in command of the Canadian Armed Forces. So that might have been a path. And perhaps I might have enjoyed that even more than the path I did choose. Or perhaps not. All I can really say is that night in the dark and the rain on the bridge of that minesweeper, when I dug down deep and got in touch with my core values, I made a commitment to the best ending I could make. And because of that, my last days in the Navy were ones of true satisfaction and gratitude. And from that foundation, I was able to step forward with enthusiasm and confidence onto any new path I chose. And I think any new beginning deserves to start with an ending like that. Thank you.